Oh, please bear with us as we, we get to questions from both groups. I appreciate everyone coming out. Hey, great win for our guys and our, and our program, and, and uh, really excited about the turnout of the Towson faithful tonight. We're going to need them even more tomorrow night. Uh, Hard-fought game. Northeastern's incredibly well coached. We knew it was going to be a hard game. They got, they got good veteran players. Um, I thought the difference in the game, you could see why these two guys are first-team all-league players. They, they, they carried us tonight. Uh, raise your hand. We'll get the uh, microphone over to you so it goes over the Zoom as well. And we'll get to you on that. If you're on Zoom, please use the hand raise feature. But if you have questions, raise your hand. And Joy, we'll get you a microphone. First off, Pat, uh, how's Charles doing at this point? So we think it's an ankle sprain. Um, but, you know, obviously concerning. He is uh, – these two guys are pretty tough, but Charles is a whole different level of toughness. So for him not to be able to – finishes is concerning. But I thought Chase Parr stepped up for us and, and, and Chris Bean and I thought Juwan Gray, we plugged him into the you know, five. If he can't go, someone else has got to be ready. You know, we've, we've had to deal with that during the course of the season. Um, but I think if, if there's a way, Charles will go. Like I said, he's as tough as they come. And for either of you guys, and Pat, if you want to chip in on this too, it seemed like a slow start for you guys out of the shoe. Was it just a matter of nerves a little bit or anything? And, and what kind of got you guys on track there by late in the, in the first half? Uh, I mean, new building and everything. Um, just a mixture of excitement and nerves, I guess. Um, but once that first half ended, we calmed down a little bit in the locker room and came out firing the second half, didn't look back. In front, Aaron. Uh, Ken, did you, in, did you aggravate your like, elbow or shoulder there late in the game? Uh, my elbow hurt a little bit, but... Dramatic. You know, we're going to be all right. <laughs> dramatic. <laughs> they say I'm a little dramatic, but had to take off for a little Charles. You know, me and Charles, the, the glue guys on the team, so I had to do it. Had a different kind of load today, so, you know, I'm fine. Nick told me to get up when I was laying down, so it was a good laughing moment for us. <laughs> and um, you guys were down 10 early in that first half, and then it um, seemed like you kind of got going on defensive end and then got a few easy buckets. I mean, to talk about that 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 uh, period where you guys kind of turned the momentum there in that first half. Um, you know, we just tried to, like, I tried to just spark a spark energy into the guys. You know, I kind of clapped my hands and wanted to pick up full court to get the guys going on. A, because once our defense gets going, our offense is going to eventually come around. So I believe that I, uh, when I start and bring the energy, you know, a guy like him who's one of our best offensive players, as good as they come in this league, he'll take us home. So I could bring that in, and he could bring another in. Going to go to the Zoom and Chris. Chris, go ahead. Hey, Kurt. hey, Coach Pat, congratulations on the win today, and uh, congratulations for you guys moving on to tomorrow. I feel like the key of the game was in the start of the second half, you came out with a 6 nothing run. Is that a good way to start out the second half, to so literally pull this game away? Yeah, it was, uh, you know, one thing we talked about, I thought we played really hard tonight. I think our execution wasn't where it normally is, and the only thing really we talked about at halftime was we only got Nick one shot in the first half, and I thought the guys did a really good job of finding him in the second half, especially Cam and, and Terry, and then when we found him, he, he delivered. That's what that's what you know really good players do in those situations. Uh, to Jerry on Zoom, and then into the front row. Hey Pat, um, you know you talked obviously in the past about some tough luck in the in these uh, tournament settings. What's that few minutes stretch like in the first half where where they're they're uh, you know these guys have that little bit of run, and then you lose Charles for a bit. Any part of you a little concerned, thinking, oh, geez, here we go again, or are you just trying to focus on the next sequence of plays? Jerry, I'm concerned right now about who we have to play next. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, you know, they're all hard games. Like I said, we knew that we knew this was going to be a hard game. Uh, you know, I just think we, we had to settle in. It's not easy. Um, you know, the, it, it's, it's a 40-minute game. A lot can happen. Our guys know that. They respect everyone. Um, we just... You know, we, f we found a way, and that, that's what it's about. I mean, I'm proud of our guys. 25 Division One wins is nothing to shake a stick at. And, and, and those aren't, you know, those are Division One. Those aren't buy games like, you know, Coach Gillens used to buy like 15 games a year and win 30. I mean, we went out one games. <laughs> that's it, Coach. Pat, how, how big was that Chase Parr put back? Your offense was struggling at the time and obviously went up by three after that. Yeah, it was huge. I mean, like I said, he stepped up. He's he's done a good job for us. You know, a lot of you, you know don't know him. He broke a bone and, and, and missed the preseason. He dealt with the death of his mom in the fall, um, and, and so he's kind of hung in there. He's a guy we're high on, and he delivered for us today. 
What what does Northeastern do that other teams don't? Is it their physicality or their size? Yeah, they're big. They're well coached. I mean, they're huge and and, and they're, they're physical and you know they they can they control tempo. We, like so, we we had two hard fought games with them. We knew this was going to be a tough game as well. Lee? Nicholas, uh, you scored two points in the first half, twenty three in the second. What was working for you in that second half? Uh, I mean, these guys they helped me out a lot. Uh, I don't dribble a lot, so just to get open. Uh, and then have them find me. I mean, I'm open, I'm shooting it, so. Zoom and Jerry. I'm good, sorry, I forgot to lower my hand. Sorry about that. Go ahead. John. Uh, for Coach, uh, 10 years ago, you finished 30 games under 500. With this win, you're now 172 and 171 <laughs> as coach at Towson. How does it feel personally or professionally to get over the hump and like, did you think it was possible? Yeah, I appreciate you bringing that up. Uh, like I said, that's a, uh, yeah, that it takes a while. Uh, I'm glad I got good players. Um, you know, for, first year was a hard year. <laughs> first year was a hard year, but it's, it's a long time. Uh, I'm just proud of our university um, and, and our players. Uh, you know, I, I think we have a great place and, and if we can continue to have success, I, I, I think it can do a lot for our great university. The Zoom and Kyle and then Pete Gillen. Yeah, uh, Nicholas, you, you hit that uh, three-pointer with about uh, five and a half minutes to go. Um, and, yeah, and our, our bench has been huge for us all year. We, we, we play eight, nine guys. We didn't play Hicks tonight, but we can sub him in. He, he's filled in for us admirably. I, I, I trust all those guys, Coach. Kyle. Uh, Nicholas, you hit that three-pointer with about five and a half minutes left. Uh, threw your hands up. Uh, what was kind of going through your mind, you know, in terms of uh, your emotions and that sort of thing? You hit that big shot. Uh, I mean, just pure excitement. Um, just trying to get the crowd hyped up. Um, got to watch it fall through the net. So I just posed there for a little bit and then got back on defense before I got yelled at. Anything else? All right, thanks, guys. Thanks. Joined by Bill Cohen and Chris Doherty from Northeastern. We'll start with an opening statement from Coach and then go to questions. Yeah, I mean, first off, I'd, I'd like to uh, congratulate Coach Gary and his staff and their program and their players on an outstanding year, uh, really from start to finish. Um, you know, they, they, they've uh, had a remarkable year and represented the CAA really well in the non-conference and, and um, you know, showed today why, you know, they were the number one seed. Um, you know, I thought we played competitively. We gave ourselves a chance, came up with a, you know, just a, a loose ball too short or, you know, a made three uh, too short um, to pull up a, a, a really big upset. But I was proud of our guys, particularly their defensive effort. Um, offensively, at times, we struggled to score, but, um, you know, we competed, and you know, I thought, um, you know, and we gave ourselves a chance. We just couldn't finish it off. Questions in the room, Coach. Following up on your kind words about Pat, um, he is having an amazing season. But when you think about that, he won four games last year. You've been around this league for a long time. Have you ever seen a better one-year turnaround in your life? Yeah, I know he had a pretty good one-year turnaround uh, a, a few years back, so, uh, uh, you know, I guess. But, you know, I think, you know, college basketball now with, with the way the transfer portal is and everything else, there's, it's going to be really hard to predict, as, as our preseason rankings will tell you, you know, wh whose roster is the best. Um, there's just a lot of, um, you know, unknown uh, and unpredictability when it comes to it. But... I think you got to give Pat credit in that he assembled a really great team. Um, and sometimes it's hard to get everybody on the same page, but he did an unbelievable job of getting those guys um, unified and and um, playing hard and smart together. So, and as always, they're going to play tough. So, uh, you know, it's no surprise to me. Okay. 
Bill, you guys did a really good job in keeping Timberlake at bay there in the first half, and then he got going. What kind of switch for him, you think, uh, and, and how much of a difference do you, th do you think he was the difference there in this game? Yeah, I thought he made some huge trees, obviously, uh, you, you know, and he, he's a guy you, you got to try to prevent him from seeing the ball go in. Once it goes in, then, you know, he starts – starts heating up and I th as you said in the first half I thought we limited his looks he didn't get many quality looks um, he got free in the second half kind of a short close out and uh, we, we it was a soft switch and he ducked behind and then he got his rhythm a little bit and I think Cam Holden found him with a great cross court pass you know so he had a couple opportunities there and he you know he, he made some big shots and gave them the separation they needed zoom and Jerry Hey, I, I have a question for both Bill and, and Chris. Uh, Bill, for you, um, you know, obviously, uh, challenge the season for you guys. Um, what's your message to the guys who are graduating? And what's your message to the guys who are going to come back with you next year about how to try to build on this and, and try to make and try to make the best out of it? And I have a follow-up. Yeah, thanks, Jerry. Yeah, I mean, you know, the last game of the year is always an emotional locker room. Uh, you know, guys are moving on. It, 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 it hits you like a train wreck. You're on, you're on a treadmill. You're going 100 miles an hour, and then all of a sudden, somebody's pressure stop. And, um, you know, when that usually happens, you know, the floodgates open. So, you know, a little bit of emotion in the, in the locker room. But, you know, what we talked about was, um, you know, anytime you, you, you put on a uniform and a Northeastern uniform, you know, the goal is to go out there and earn respect. And, you um, you know, respect from your opponents, respect from the from the fans, uh, respect from your teammates and staff. And, you know, I thought our guys did that over the course of the last two days here competing. Um, and we had a lot to be proud of. We've had an up and down year. And a lot of teams could have kind of given in and not shown the fight and, and resiliency that we did in, in, in here. Um, but, you know, I was proud of that, the, the way we responded and the perseverance you know, that you, you learn from that is a life lesson. So we talked about that. Um, and we talked about, you, you know, guys that are coming back, you know, setting, setting meetings uh, next week when we get back to campus. Um, the guys are going forward to have them come in and meet and how we can help them, you know, with, with their, you know, next move in life. Um, but just, you, you know, really a, a sense of, you know, pride of those guys giving their all to this program and, and just very grateful to get an opportunity to coach them and, and that, you know, sometimes, you know, the wins and losses don't always show up in, 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 on a score sheet. There, there, there are other ones that you do and, you know, earning that respect is important for us. Follow up from Jerry and then one more. And Chris, uh, obviously two games in, I guess, 20 hours. Um, you know, it, do, you feel, do you feel that in the second half at all? Or is it just adrenaline and... Um, you, you don't feel anything until the game's over. You know, to start of the game, I was telling myself I was tired, but then I realized there's a lot more in the world like what's going on in Ukraine right now. Those people are going through it, and this is a basketball game. And I realized, like I said, I tell myself I wasn't tired and had to dig down deep. So I wasn't tired, I would say. That's kind of a rant, like a, to go off script a little bit, but no, I was not tired. Anything else in the room? Uh, coach, what's it been like to coach the seniors this season and then for Jason and Shaq uh, throughout their careers at Northeastern? Yeah, so seniors always have a special place in my heart. Those are the guys that have, you know, been here through the, the ups and downs. And, you know, it's a, it's a very long relationship, starting with the recruiting process and everything else. So these guys, even a, a year or so before they got to Northeastern, you get to know them and their families. Um, and, you, you know, to me, uh, you know, I always look at my role as a coach, as an educator, and what am I? I'm, I'm trying to teach life through basketball, and um, you know, hopefully, those guys learned a few things here. But J you know, Jason and and, and Shaq, um, you know, really, really great in individuals, elite teammates, guys that have kind of you know worn the uniform with pride. Um, Nick's only been here a year, uh, but he's a, somebody we recruited in high school as well, so we had a lo very long-standing relationship with him and his family. Um, so there's a, there's, a, there's a sense of pride that they're going to be graduating and moving on, but also a sense of sadness that, that, that this chapter's over. Um, but it's like that each and every year, and, and um, next year there'll be a new group of seniors. But, you know, very proud of that group. One more. 
Chris, I think you got your last foul with mid and change left. Um, how much do you think your presence inside was missed on, you know, in that comeback? Uh, can you repeat the last, the last foul? The was last your, foul. Was your presence missed? Oh. Yeah. Um, I mean, if I go out, I trust the guys. They've gone runs when I've been out. It was an unfortunate foul. I should have just got back, but it happens. It's basketball. But um, they still competed after that, and we're still right in the position to win. Just a couple of loose balls or shots go our way. Maybe it's a different outcome, but like it's basketball. But yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you.